Jamie Clark's birth should have been a joyous occasion, but it turned into a nightmare. Jamie's mother was rushed into hospital for an emergency delivery. He was due in August, we had him in May, um, and it was literally because he wasn't thriving inside, so they had to do an emergency caesarean. Just seems like a bit like a dream, actually. Um, it's, not, it's not quite happening. It's, but then suddenly you're in the labour room and it's happening and you're going to have this baby. Jamie was close to death. He was rushed from the delivery room into the intensive care baby unit, where a specialist team of doctors and nurses were waiting. They linked Jamie up to a battery of high-tech equipment in a desperate bid to keep him alive. Michelle Clark knew she had given birth to a boy, but no one could tell her if he would live. He was born at half five. I was allowed to go down to the unit at half nine. Um, they could take the bed down, because obviously I was, um, my legs were paralysed. So, And there he was, just laying there all with the little hat on and the tube in his mouth and just lines everywhere and probes and monitors. So it was, it was a lot to take in. Jamie weighed less than one and a half pounds. He couldn't breathe, so doctors put Jamie on a ventilator. A tube was put down his throat to pump air directly into his lungs. This conventional ventilator forced air in at high pressure, so risking damage to Jamie's delicate lungs. These forms of ventilation have been going for a long time, have saved a lot of lives, but they do tend to lead to damage both to the airway because of the use of the tube into the lung and also to the lungs themselves. And everybody's desperately trying to search for ways of damaging the newborn lung less, particularly in the tiny baby, because we know that chronic lung disease, the sequel of this damage that we induce very early in life in the lung, can go on and produce great problems later in life. Jamie was critical, but then things got worse. And he got E. coli and a secondary blood infection, so he had to be reventilated. He was very, very poorly then, seriously poorly. He really did look one stage up from death. This is the machine that helped save Jamie's life. This experimental ventilator is the only one of its kind in the world. It's known as CYPAP. And this is the man who invented it. Dr. Simon Bignall is a consultant in the paediatric intensive care. The CYPAP machine is the culmination of 10 years' work. It was Jamie's only hope. Now, we put him on CYPAP, uh, hoping for some improvement, because we hadn't seen any for some weeks. And he made a remarkable and dramatic recovery on that. Dr. Bignall has worked with premature babies for 20 years. He's witnessed a transformation in the care of these babies. It's one of the great success stories of modern medicine. And this little life crept into the world, but only just. The Before the war, premature babies might be put in an oxygen tent, but many died. On behalf of the frail body. Now the technology of incubators and ventilators means that almost all survive traumatic births. Over the last few decades, there's been a dramatic improvement in the survival of babies born very early. So much so that a given gestation uh, a few decades ago, 90% of the babies might have died, whereas now 90% of the babies survive. The revolutionary thing about this machine is that it doesn't need a tube to be pushed into the tiny lungs, and the machine can sense when the baby is trying to breathe. A constant gentle stream of air keeps the lungs open and stops them collapsing. But to provide the extra air the baby needs, a sensor is placed on the baby's chest. This detects when the baby is trying to breathe, and delivers a puff of extra air just when it's needed. We can see two traces. The upper one is the airway pressure trace, which is measuring the pressure applied to the baby's airway, in this case the nose. And in the lower trace here, the green, we can see the baby's breathing pattern, which is quite complex in this case because the baby has quite severe chronic lung disease. The software is determining the very onset of each breath that the baby takes, despite the complexity of the breathing signal, and is triggering the new CYPAP device to cause an increase in flow and pressure applied to the baby's airway, coincident with each breath that the baby takes. In the future, the hope is that very tiny babies, down to as little as half a kilo, could be put on the new machine from birth. Trials with the new ventilator are still in their early stages, and only a few babies have been put on it, but it may have saved Jamie Clark's life.
He's my baby. He's, he's alive. He had the fight in him to, to get through it. And that's what a lot of it is, a lot of fight on the baby's part. As much as medical intervention, they've got to want to as well. And he, he decided he wanted to. Oh.